So if we back away from this story, we can see this notion that ArcGIS is a platform for organizations. It has cloud parts, server parts, desktop parts, web app parts. And it, because of its architecture, will allow us to leverage our legacy, if we want to call it that, <laughs> systems, plug-in, with catalog services to be able to discover what everybody is doing. It also allows us with open standards to provide open access, one of the themes of the engineering underneath the covers. It also will improve collaboration. We saw that in some of these examples, and we'll see much more of it this afternoon. And it's also this notion that it can empower everybody else, help you do your work more. It's not a replacement. It's an additional thing that organizes and makes accessible everything you do. ArcGIS has also got a few other stories. One of them is it's a strong imagery platform. It now reads all imagery types with different sensor models from different sources, aerial imagery. And it's not just something on the side. It's actually been engineered and implemented as being part of the core platform. It has many image processing tools for visualization and analytics so, and data management. So instead of having two screens on your desktop, it's just one integrated system. And this has been implemented with new concepts in image processing, dynamic image processing, very fast image processing, and massively scalable image processing in the server environment. This is an open platform, and it's not just our own tools, but partners like Excellus and PCI and others have integrated the access to this, so ensuring that we have multiple technologies that work on the platform technology. At 10.1, we implemented the ability to unlock LiDAR data. This means being able to read directly LAS files and use them in both vector and raster environments for visualization and also LAS analytics, leveraging a lot of the tools that already exist there, but then introducing some new ones. A big effort this year for us has been the integration of this ArcGIS environment with other enterprise systems. This has been hard in the past and has limited its use in the past. So some of you have already seen the integration with Microsoft Office. So if I'm a spreadsheet user, I could drag and drop my spreadsheets and make maps and implement them in my analytics. Today, we're announcing a few new things, however. Integration with not only the BI platform of Cognos from the cloud and SharePoint from the cloud, but also MicroStrategies and SAP. This means people that do BI analytics can not only make charts and graphs and tables, but they can have dynamic, real-time, out-of-the-cloud services from ArcGIS Online. ArcGIS is also a platform for developers. It's a major theme of ESRI this year, not only open interoperability standards, but also the delivery of small, lightweight runtimes for embedding and open APIs following standard patterns so that desktop apps and web apps and these device apps are not just authored by us, but much more importantly, we want them authored by everyone. We have new business programs to give this technology to startups to help them get going in this geospatial place. And not just the technology, but also new generations of technology that make it simple for developers. Uh, to, and, and toolkits that help people manage their tools. And finally, coming this summer, something we call Marketplace, which is, you might think of it as a store, so that developers can mm, re redistribute their work to our users everywhere. A couple years ago, users asked us if we would work on patterns that showed best practices within different industries. 
And so we've been adopting that request and have come out with a fleet of apps and sample maps within different industries and models and some additional tools. These are free, they're open sourced, and they're supported just like the basic product. They're not end user solutions, they're the templates that allow people to actually take these templates and build solutions from them. And many of our users have just saved millions and millions of dollars in getting going, but also developers have been able to use it as patterns with, with the same data models underneath it so we don't get confused about that. For the last two decades, uh, we have produced a series of solution products. These are relatively narrow things uh, in, for example, cartography or roads and highways or community analyst and landscape analyst you've seen. Uh, last year, we introduced something called bathymetry. This is really a very difficult subject to be able to take bag files from, from uh, a bathymetric source from many different sources and bring it together into models. We work on this in the solution space, but most of the work gets done by our partners. And I want to take a minute and, and thank them. I know some of them are here. These are about 2,000 partners who extend help our users work with our technology and do integration. Uh, for example, the Arlington Cemetery work in part was assisted, um, assisting the major do some of his work. Th these are people that love GIS and have partnered with us for years. Uh, these, these technologies are like 90% of the apps that get built in the commercial space. So I want to thank them and, uh, and acknowledge them. They'll, many of them are here in the exhibit area that you can see tonight and tomorrow. I'll conclude by a comment about, about ESRI. We're healthy, we're growing. This is sort of my stockholder meeting. <laughs> you are my stockholders. And, and I appreciate the relationship between, between us. Uh, you've given us lots of directions. We screw up, I know, and I apologize when we do that. But uh, it's been pretty good working with you, and, and uh, so thank you. Our vision is to create a GIS platform. That's what we're driving to. I hope that I could get that message across to you in this talk, and this afternoon you'll see it in a much better light. Um, this platform is designed to address the kind of challenges that you in government space face, and they're big. Our interest, our personal interest, is also to advance the method, <laughs> advance the both the science as well as the technology and engineering dimensions of, of making GIS work and hopefully having an impact on spatial literacy around the world and making a difference, making a difference in other communities. To do this, we've designed programs like giving our software away to NGOs and schools and, and other organizations, and we have a few hundred partnerships that really help us amplify that kind of activity. We have some new ones. The Audubon Society, or at Claremont University, the Harvard, Har, Har, the uh, Peter Drucker School. Most of you know Peter Drucker? Yeah, he's a pioneer. So before he died, he said, you know, the last frontier for business efficiency, including government, was spatial, spatial logistics. So now the Peter Drucker School has embraced GIS. They have a new program there. It's quite an extraordinary thing, offering clinics and, and educational programs. It's one end of the spectrum, the academic spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is, is my new best friend, Will I Am, <laughs> down here in the middle. Uh, how many know, of you know Will I Am? Three people in this audience. <laughs> well, he's a rapper, and he's totally, totally got into GIS and uh, his foundation we're going after schools in ghettos to introduce methods of education, et cetera, in schools. And it's, uh, he's excited, I'm excited, and, and we're making some real progress there. And then there's a whole bunch of other partners I won't go into, but I want to say that they're part of your ecosystem, and you can use them and get connected with them as well. That's why we do it. I'll close by a comment about our country, and I've already said it, but I'd like to reinforce it. In, in, in this age, I think your work today, as we saw in all those examples, is making a difference. I mean, a significant difference. The evidence is actually there. 
And I hope I was able to get across this notion, at least from my experience, we're at a turning point where this is going to grow out and become a platform. It's, I see the hockey stick actually affecting our own, our own work, and we're holding on, evolving it, serving you who are actually making it come alive. I think this, transform's gonna, this, this platform will transform what you do. It'll transform how we work as communities, both in government and between government and, and academia and the private sector. It's going to help us make efficiencies, the very thing that, that our legislators and, and the White House is driving right now. It'll help us do collaboration and communicate more effectively. It'll help us also make better decisions, as we saw from the landscape uh, analyst we can, we can bring all the geography and information and models right into the hands of people who can do these designs and strategic planning. That's the evidence of what I'm talking about. It isn't what it is. It's just the beginning. But to realize this vision, to realize this notion of transforming or geo-transforming uh, the government and the world will take, will take you, actually working across government. And here we're not talking about hardware or software or cloudware. It's kind of humanware. <laughs> uh, working and, and collaborating and embracing and imagining this new generation of what the pl platform will bring. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci once said, knowing is not enough. It's not enough just to know about this stuff. Um, we must apply it. And he also said, being willing is not enough also. Uh, we must do. I met also uh, this in another interesting musician this year. Do you guys know uh, Yo-Yo Ma? He's a very, very famous guy. And he's also totally interested in GIS, by the way. Uh, he's going to be presenting at the uh, Kennedy in April. He's going to talk a little bit about GIS, so better buy your tickets now. <laughs> but anyway, we were drinking some wine and enjoying life, and he said, you know, Jack, I, s I asked him about his life, I guess, and he said, you know, Jack, I sort of came up with this doubting myself. I said, I said yo, yo, Ma, doubting himself? He says, yeah, I, I always have it. And even before I perform and I get up, I still have self-doubts. But what distinguishes me is I then do. So I doubt, but then I do. Isn't that an interesting story? I mean, I, mean, I was totally touched because of all of his expressions. This, for me, was the most uh, interesting one. And it builds right on what uh, Leonardo da Vinci said. You can know. You can understand. But that's not enough. We actually have to do.